Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and welcome to a study session on lean or uric acid body types versus fat or mucus body types. And this is a question that I've been getting quite a bit uh, recently, and uh, it kind of makes me happy because it's something that a lot of people have missed out on or overlooked or don't really consider because it's definitely not a part of a mainstream type of way of looking at the human body. But for me, uh, Arnold Eretz's way of categorizing the body into two types is, is very simple. It's self-evident. It's easily, it, it, and it's easy to observe, and it's very relevant for understanding how to properly transition yourself based on <clears throat> what type of physiology you have. Uh, the type of physiology you have will let you know what kind uh, kind of explain why you crave certain things. You know why you crave some, certain things other and somebody else that's a different body type might not crave the same thing, or why it's better for you to transition using a certain type of methodology versus a, uh, something else. So we'll talk about all those things right now so this is the uh, annotated mucus diet healing system and uh, so what I wanted to kind of do is go over some of the different things so we'll look at Eric's writing then we'll look a, a little bit at some of the things that I've talked about to try to help people understand the difference between these types uh, we'll also look at some examples of pictures of people and I'll kind of give a little mucus's diet explanation uh, as to what we're looking at when we talk about uh, physiology type and what all of this means. So if we check out lesson four, diagnosis part two, and on and it's mucus's diet healing system, you see fat and lean types. The bodily mechanism of the fat type is on the average mechanically more obstructed because he or she is in general an overeater of starchy foods. In the lean type, there is a more physiological chemical interference with the organism, such as one being in general a one-sided meat eater, a condition which produces especially much acidity, uric acid, other poisons, and pus. Okay, so right here, we see that Eret says that a fat type is going to be mechanically more obstructive. What does that mean? These are going to be people that put on weight, that eat fatty food. Doesn't matter what they eat. You know, they eat fatty foods, but they tend to eat a lot of starch, which is that can transform a body into that kind, that type. You know, starch, uh, a lot of kind of starchy things, uh, fatty foods, and it's easy for them to put on weight when they eat these kind of things. Uh, and basically what the body is doing is dealing with mucus. And this is from the mucus diet perspective because you can explain these things in other ways. But when you're looking at it from this way, the body is attempting to deal with the elimination and removal of undigested uneliminated food substance in a particular kind of way and in the case of a fatty type or a mucus type the body is trying to tuck it away in the tissue system and so you get fat you, know, you get this uh, you know this sort of watery nasty sort of substance uh, too much of it the body has you know has has a little bit of fat in it and it's natural but uh the somebody that overeats a lot of quantity of food and it's unable to be digested and eliminated uh, is you know some of it's just going to sit in the colon some of it's going to become the slimy uh, lining uh, uh, along the sides of the intestines and you know could create this whole sort of slimy situation but over time the body has to find some place to sort of redirect this stuff and in the case of, pe of people that we call overweight or obese or whatnot which is what I you know kind of my tradition of what I come from is being uh, an overweight kind of person um, 
that's what that's just how the body deals with that kind of uh, mucus poisoning is which is that and again we're trying to offer a different way to look at things and change the language that's the power of language when you start talking that's why you know on the forums and stuff you know i'm really kind of challenge people to take a look at the way that we think and talk about these things because that changes your understanding with your understanding that can help change your action but if you're stuck in this world of, of calories and this world of metabolism and all these kind of concepts and big boned and you know and all these kind of things uh, that are very not practical they're not it doesn't help anybody explain anything especially in terms of elimination um, you know you can get stuck now with the lean type there is a, a great deal of toxicity and acids in general uh, and but the thing to understand here is you know there's different levels of all these you know you have uh and and, and i i have a theory which i maybe i'll wait and talk about that to later i but just to give an overview i kind of have a theory that there's definitely different le- there's not just okay this is a fat type and lean type initially it's that's the simplest way to approach this and I have a theory that there's different levels of uric acidness and uh, and, and and fattiness in terms of the you know there's some uric acid types that are going to be more toxic uh, than others and that will come out in the detoxification process and the elimination process but uh, we will get to that a little more but let's take a look at my note here so if I hit on the uh, the twenty first end note this was uh, my addition to this so i say that arnold eric categorizes human physiology into two main categories fat also called mucus and lean also called uric acid types people with uric acid physiologies are often said to have high metabolisms and can seemingly eat a lot and not gain any weight the misconception is that this person is healthier than an overweight person this is often not the case as their body only handles mucus and pus differently than someone with a fatty or mucus physiology. This condition often occurs in people who are one-sided meat eaters, a condition that produces uric acid, uh, other poisons, and pus. Essentially, instead of depositing mucus as fat throughout the organism, such waste is converted to uh, poisonous acid, uh, low-carb diets that emphasize eating meat such as the Atkins diet essentially transform one's body type from fat to lean thus weight loss for people on such a diet is a negative proposition because they lose weight at the expense of creating much internal toxicity thin people who participate in competitive eating are usually lean uric acid types contemporarily when someone with a fat mucus type of physiology eats pus and mucus forming foods it will usually result in weight gain eating great amounts of such foods is the cause of obesity in people uh, with this type of physiology so i also think some of what i write in spirit speaks is uh, is similar to that uh, uh to, to what I have there but you know we understand uh, physio- physiological types uh, this section under losing weight and physiological karma uh, we understand that the skinny patient who has a great metabolism is uh, in actuality a uric acid type where the mucus they eat is burned by the toxic waste in their bodies obese people are usually mucus types and their bodies endeavor to tuck the uneliminated waste into the tissue system away from the heart and lungs depending on what type of physiology you currently are will tell you how much weight you will lose and what type of transition your body needs and uh then i go on when i met brother air i was a 280 pound mucus type Uh, when we when we started talking about the diet we never even talked about weight all of the emphasis was placed on the diet with the knowledge that the weight is eventually going to be whatever it is supposed to be it is easier said than done because the physiological battles that we face uh, because that we will face Um, 
uh, as I lost weight, I traveled through what I call my <laughs> perfect American size, uh, where, you know, basically as I lost weight, I, I would get into this, uh, you know, went through this size, the size that was sort of acceptable by American standards. But then when I started getting skinnier than that, uh, people that didn't know me, you didn't, didn't think anything, but people that knew me, uh, from the past, you know, they got concerned and say, like, Oh, you're, man, you're losing a lot of weight. And, you know, uh, where's all your, you know, used to look so good and all this muscle. It's like, and I was sick all the time. And, you know, but that's, that's the thing is we have to change our mentality of why, what we think looks good because depending on where we grew up, and what kind of media we've been indoctrinated by, we have a very, very mucus-drenched view of human physiology and what looks good, what doesn't look good when it comes to weight. You know, and that's one reason why we say with Brother Air, we never talked about weight. You know, because I was obviously interested in losing weight because I had tried for many years and was unsuccessful and then when I would kind of bring it up thing I brought it up to brother air one time early I was like well so I, I would probably lose weight with this diet right and he just kind of looked at me <laughs> it was like man we don't even talk about weight man just just get into the transition you know just do what you need to do and focus on getting off of pus and mucus forming foods and let the weight take care of itself so uh so yeah uh so let me go. There's a few other times where I talk about this. And and when I'm working <clears throat> with a client in a consultation and coaching situation, that's always something I want to know. I mean, there's my, my questionnaire is very simple. Uh, I, I have about six questions on my questionnaire uh, that I use. I know, you know, some people, when they, you go get a consultation, you get something with somebody and they there's a long, you know, two-page questionnaire it might have 20 questions on it or something like that and and, and what's funny is like if you if you go to a uh, like a general practitioner or something like that they'll, they'll ask all these questions but very rarely will they ask something that really pertains to diet you know they want to know uh, do you have a history of something and you're if you ever been diagnosed with something and does your parents and your dad have this disease and genetic and all this kind of stuff but they never really get down to the nitty-gritty like well what'd you eat yesterday did you eat pus and mucus forming foods yesterday did you eat it for the pet you know what did you eat growing up uh, and if you can find out what kind of body type these person are based on this uh, this this two body type system it can be very uh, you know, it's just easier to simplify and understand what's going on. Then, uh, so down here, the last thing I'll read, and then we'll get to some pictures. Uh, physiological types, Arnold Aaron identifies two kinds of physiologies, mucus, lean, uh, mucus and lean. In particular, these types refer to the way in which a particular body copes with digesting and eliminating mucus and pus-forming foods. Mucus types are usually more mechanically obstructed and are overeaters of starchy foods. Their uh, bodies tuck the uneliminated waste into the tissue system away from the heart and lungs. And when large amounts of uneliminated mucus are in the body, they become obese. Lean or uric acid types are characterized by having an inordinate amount of toxic waste, acidity, uric acid and pus in the body and are generally one-sided meat eaters uh, the overeating of pus and mucus in this type uh, results in the body breaking down the waste into very toxic chemicals that res uh, remain un uh, limited until until detoxification so uh, yeah. okay yeah, so let's let's take a look here at these different types, and we'll just so I just do a, you know high metabolism skinny. So this is this concept of high metabolism. We we pretty much just dis discard that as not being useful. It's not helpful for mucus's diet understanding and detoxification. You know this kind, and and we pretty much consider this to just be a uh, you know, total kind of misnomer. Or just this is not uh, really helpful in understand and helping us understand how the uh, uh, 
how the body detoxifies and eliminates. But uh, we can see there's this uh, sta- kind of standard way that some people, uh, I guess in the scientific community, categorize about it. Because, uh, you know, lean and mucus type, it's a theory. Uh, ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph, that's a theory. It's ways to categorize. Anything that we do in terms of observation and explanation is going to be a theory. The question is, what is the usefulness of any given theory? What theories can be discarded or put to the side? And what theories can we get something from? A deeper understanding and practical information that can help us on our journey. So with you know, with a lot of the standard ways of looking at it they just say well this is how your body is and so you know whatever they would have called me an an endomorph but when I lost a lot of weight then they uh, they wouldn't you know they guess they you maybe called me a mesomorph uh at one point maybe they'd have called me an ectomorph there was one time when I got I got fairly skinny um in my transition and I picked weight back up and uh and so I've kind of gone in and out depending on what was going on physiologically what kind of elimination that I was going through but in this case we would say well this is a uric acid type you know very very slender and it probably could eat a lot of stuff and not really put on a whole lot of weight and uh you know mucus type and then this uh this would probably I mean the, the this mesomorph would also probably be put in that category of, uh, of mucus type, you know, if we were going to have to put somebody in those two, because this, this could kind of fairly easily turn into, into this and go in that direction more so than, than this going into this direction. Unless this person got on the Atkins diet, started eating a whole bunch of meat or same thing with this. And then they, they could get real skinny. But again, that's not the way that you want to get skinny. You don't want to get skinny, through acids <laughs> by overwhelming your body with uric acid to burn up the fat that's in your system uh yeah that just common sense should tell you that that's not gonna be a a good idea but let's see if there was any uh i don't know if, these, if this is the greatest example here let me look at these skinny people so now of course this is gonna be some 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 real super skinny uh people and you know we start talking about some of the uh you know that the, the like anorexia and these uh, uh you know like the so-called eating disorders you know we always look at you know first and foremost when you t- uh like brother air there's a couple of videos where he's talking about this i mean they're uh these are people that that will eat and then they they have a uh, it's like a mental illness because they're looking in the mirror and they might be skin and bones or something and they will uh they they'll think that they're fat you know or they'll count calories you know I watched this uh this Oprah episode uh years ago that was kind of famous of of a woman that was uh you know kind of real kind of real skinny like this and uh, you know she basically she she could tell you every calorie like it was just an obsession I mean she could tell you okay this and I ate this and and she just and, and mentally she looked in the mirror and thought she was fat and uh, you know so brother I mean that's that that's kind of like a western mental illness for particularly if I think for for west well now it's probably worldwide but just you know, people that have that kind of money to even think like that, you know, and to be in a culture to, to, to sort of have that enter into the consciousness. And it's, it is a real it's a real thing because it, it, it's all, you know, it's all mental illness and it's physiological illness, whether whether it's on the skinny side or it's, uh, you know, it's on the, uh, you know, on the obese side of things, it's uh you know, we just we just have work to do, you know, because I'm not into any kind of, of like body shaming and judgment or anything like that. We're trying to look at this objectively. And the only thing I'm concerned about is how can we eliminate 
pus and mucus, progressively eliminate pus and mucus from the dietary and allow the body to go through the elimination that it goes through and it needs to go through in order to get down into whatever the body's supposed to be. And so I, I, I here I looked up big boned people because that that was that was what I was under the impression that was my thing. You know, I thought I was so big boned and I was destined to be big. Uh, even though I looked at pictures of myself when I was really young and I hadn't really started picking up a lot of weight yet. And it's like, man, if I, that guy's kind of, you know, like I, I, I sort of saw how I could have been skinny er, um, but, you know, but by the time I was, you know, kind of, I don't know, six, seven, eight kind of age, I was starting to really, you know, put on more weight. And I just took that identity because a lot of the way we think about ourselves and body image and that kind of stuff is based on social programming in being treated a certain way based on how people around us view us and treat and, and, and part of our survival that's hardwired into our into our brain is the the need to be accepted you know feeling like we we want to impress other people where we want to be loved and accepted why because there's protection in that you know be, but this can turn into various maladies that we see from different levels of narcissism to uh, neediness to you know the, the, this you know very low self-esteem you know all the all these things that you hear everybody else talk about but it is based on this social conditioning and these issues in, in a uh, like I say know thyself people that don't really know who they are and you know they're trying to find a way to reconcile the outside world with the inside world and they really you know it's, and it's, it's hard when you don't understand that pus and mucus is, is is an unnatural way to live that we're not supposed to be eating that way and going through that uh, kind of thing um, so uh, yeah so I guess we've we, you know break this this whole thing down big big bone and stuff uh so now, I mean, pra practically, what 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 happens is so if you're if you're too skinny or you're or you got too much accumulation of, of fatty tissue and uh, from from mucus forming foods and starch and fats and all that kind of stuff, what happens is when you start to eliminate and and you get slender and your physiology changes. So if you're on the skinny side, if you're uric acid type and the skinny side of things, you actually will probably pick, if you transition properly, you will pick up some weight. Uh, and one of the things that I recommend for a lot of uric acid types is to do a lot of green, green juices. And that's one reason, this is an observation and only we would have this analysis, but when I look at some of the, uh, a lot of the, the raw foods kind of guru figures are uric acid types. And I noticed that some of them really have an affinity for green drinks. And that makes sense. It makes sense that uh, if because some of them can't even drink fruit juice without getting lightheaded and kind of going through a whole whole thing just physiologically is it, it, if the fruit juice is actually a little too aggressive for them but green drinks are on point so they'll they'll sort of go f they'll they'll skip over a juice fasting sort of level uh and uh like or they'll skip over fruit juice fast kind of thing and they'll go from vegetable juice drinking and then water fasting and that's sort of their thing um you know, and I and I and I kind of thought about this a lot. You know, I used to watch videos of uh, of uh, you know Dan McDonald when he was juicing and stuff, and and, and he was really uh, him and a lot of other folks was really into the green drinks. And I could never get excited about green drinks like that. I mean, I tried and I and I do them, but I kind of have to almost force myself. Like if it's if it if I know that I will benefit at a particular point from doing some green drinks, and I'll do it. But it's it is is hard for me to get into something where I'm doing it every day cuz I just don't my my physiology doesn't doesn't love green drinks like other people but it does love fruit juice you know and it loves fruit 
Uh, and so, so that's just something I kind of observe. But when I'm working with people that are uric acid types, you know, what I'm saying, well, you know, get into the green drinks and you know, get into the uh, you know, big a lot of a lot of vegetables, you know, the big big salads, uh, big, because you're trying to neutralize those acids. When you do a lot of acid fruits and a lot even the sub acid fruits, you're gonna be more aggressive and you're going to have a situation where you are uh, uh, you know you you can potentially eliminate and loosen up too much of that toxic waste that you can put it into your system uh, you know much too fast and then you you got the heart palpitations and anxiety and so on and so forth and that's not good so to so a green drink is a great habit if you're uric acid type um, you know and kind of dealing with and I don't know that some of these pictures are kind of, <laughs> you know, this is, this is kind of hard finding a finding a thing. And then on, on the other side, for people that are a little bigger, that's those are usually the people that I, if I'm working with personally, I'll I'll push them a little harder because it's it's in general it's gonna be safer for. And this is interesting because a lot of uric acid type people they want to do long fast. They actually want to try to skip over the transition go into nothing but fruit or nothing but like like a like a mono avocado diet or something and uh you know like it, they just had this real propensity for that and they'll want to do these long fasts but then they'll normally will run into issues they'll run into problems because they're going to they're not they're going too fast uh and they're not neutralizing those that deep toxic waste that deep uric acid uh, that is, you know, where it's in the form of uric acid. Now, if you're, if you mucus type, then, you know, head and, 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 and you can, it's, it's a little safer for you, in my opinion, to, to kind of do the longer fast. You still got to transition into it. Cause I don't, I don't never tell people to do really do long fast without really, uh, really knowing what you're doing. But, um, if you get your it just physiologically what my experience was was as i started to transition i got to a point where uh i i just started you know i sweated i well first i would i'd go through these big eliminations where i would blow my nose all day every day for a week or two at a time and 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 uh you know brother Aaron in a previous video had talked about that he had never really seen anything like that because he himself didn't go through something like that but in my case because I had taken so many pharmaceutical medications that suppressed my mucus elimination I had to go through months of fairly intensive mucus elimination so those of you that are you know blowing your nose for several days or a week and like well I've been mucus free for a couple months and, and I'm blowing my nose and I'm, and I'm sick and I'm, I was like that's you know that's exactly what should be happening you know that they, that's nothing that a couple months here six months there in the beginning it's nothing Th that's what this thing is about you it, this doesn't go go away uh, stopping putting these things in your body is the start and once your body starts to say hey okay this is cool then it's going to want to kick out all the the unnecessary waste from the body and then you know and, and there's no rule in terms of uh time you know everybody wants to know because I, I understand it's not comfortable you know i i had to get myself in this mental space where i just got so like i was i looked forward to being sick i mean from that perspective and, and if and, and try to understand this this isn't like i'm trying to make myself sick Cause that's what people would think but like i i welcomed and looked forward to uh you know have, having a fever and having to blow my nose like that you know because i knew i was eliminating i was i was going to come up out of that a cleaner person um so so anyway so that's 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 the main thing when we talk when when i'm dealing with a uric acid type you know you got to be real careful and 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 so I, I don't try to push them into no kind of you know let's let's keep it you know I, I actually with a lot of uric acid type uh there was a couple people that were former raw foodist and they had got to the point where they no longer could uh, digest food 
they had been trying they've been taking like the probiotics and doing all those uh, uh kombucha teas and all this kind of stuff and uh and, and i had to transition them into cooked mucus free food and that changed everything just taking that step back and getting into some big salads with uh with with baked zucchini or baked summer squash or baked acorn squash or uh the steamed vegetables but but particularly the, the cooked squashes uh you know it helped tremendously baked banana stewed stewed fruit it changed the game and it was the and, and the reason that this is so good those kinds of things are 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 very uh uh good is because they're mucus free whilst not being particularly aggressive if all you're ever doing is eating nothing but watermelon all day or nothing but grapes for 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 you you know for years and years and you haven't worked to that point and gotten rid of a lot of the toxicity that's it's gonna be too aggressive and you're gonna feel good for a while but at some point you're gonna really go through something that's not uh that's not gonna be very pleasurable and uh so 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 with the uric acid type i say slow and steady get into the classic trans uh, mucus's diet you know find uh you know go through my list of uh i got the prof- prof- professor spears list of uh i'll just go here real quick and we'll we'll take a look at even with what i'm talking about specifically and uh and by the way, we're in the process of upgrading mucusfreelife.com. So by the time you see this video, website might not look like this anymore. We're, uh, we're upgrading things quite a bit as it's uh, it's time. Uh, looking forward to releasing the uh, e-course here in several weeks, hopefully. But uh, let's see, list of, where's my spirits, list of foods. So, like I said, really exploring the cooked vegetable baked or steamed vegetables so you, acorn squash and these were all stuff that I use that, that I found good uh, um, you know baked sweet potato zucchini spaghetti squash uh, steamed carrots the green peas you know just this kind of stuff that is going to not turn slimy and if you're doing enemas and and always combine cooked vegetables with raw vegetables, uh, you know, with raw salad to help elimination. But uh, these are the kind of things that are going to help with elimination. And you have uh, I got a whole list of of uh, different mucus lean things, starchy and fatty things that, that can be uh, that can be explored and, and used, you know, because with the transition, believe me. I mean, I went through, ve- you know, vegetarian phases and vegan phases, and I ate processed vegan food at times. Uh, the principles that I always had once I'd read the mucus's diet is anytime I had mucus-forming foods, I was always going to have a big raw salad with it. And that was just a great habit to have because the mucus-forming foods are finite. So I'll go through periods of no mucus forming foods, but that raw salad is going to be there. You know, the raw fruit is going to be there. Or or if I get into cook, uh, you know, some some cooked fruit, it's going to be there. Um, so so I don't have a problem. You know, I'm not you know, everybody wants to you know be, be real, you know, real super hardcore. And it's like we and that's good because sometimes we have to reevaluate where we place our how our our hardcore attitude uh because i think with some people it's it's misplaced 